We are well into the review season at this point. A lot of TVs have come through here. And I gotta say, from a bang for your buck perspective, Hisense is kind of killing it. Welcome back everybody, I'm Caleb Dennison and today we're gonna unbox, set up and get first impressions on the Hisense U7G TV. This is the step down from their flagship U8G TV and frankly, I think this might be the TV that most folks should be looking at. I'm gonna explain that and why Hisense is killing it in the bang for your buck department soon, but before we get into that, I gotta crack this puppy open, get it set up and have a look at it. Maybe we shouldn't crack anything. You know what, we're gonna be very gentle. Before I very gingerly unbox this TV, have you had a Hisense TCL or Vizio TV for two or more years at this point? How's it holding up on the long term? Let me know about that down in the comments. And while you're down there, please click like and subscribe. You know we're gunning to get over a million subs. We're almost to 850,000. I need your help to make it there. All right, now let's do this thing. Okay, so here's everything that comes in the box. We've got two legs, four screws, a uh, slightly redesigned remote. We've got a Google Assistant button there. So we do have voice capabilities with the remote. There are, some, <laughs> there are now six hotkeys on this remote, which seems kind of overboard. You know, manufacturers get paid to uh, put names on there, right? Couple batteries, power cable, a breakout cable. God love you, Hisense. That is, that's adorable these days. And uh, some product literature. All right, time to get the feed installed. And before we start screwing, we wanna notice that we have a couple of different positions that we can take to put the feed in here, either closer in for a media stand that doesn't have a lot of clearance or we have plenty of room. So we're gonna go with this particular option and then you're just two screws away from being done. And here we go, back of the TV shot. Not a ton to see here. I mean, we have a mostly metal chassis with a little bit of plastic here. They gave us some clips at the bottom of the feet for cable management. Not much, but at least they gave us something. I think what we're really interested in is over here, the HDMI ports, right? We've got four of them. Two of them are labeled 4K 120. The other two are labeled 4K 60. We'll see how that shakes out when we connect an Xbox Series X a little bit later. At any rate, not a ton to look at back here. I think what really counts is on the other side, so let's flip this thing around. Okay, a couple of things to mention. One is there's a lot of hidden plastic on this TV, so make sure you give it a thorough inspection, get all that stuff off. Next thing I notice is that this TV doesn't feel super premium. It's very light, which makes it easy to wall mount or place, but you got a lot of smoke and mirrors up front. It has a more premium feel. You have almost no bezels on the side or at the top. You do get the old Hisense silver strip down at the bottom, which takes away from the premium feel a little bit. Uh, the other thing I notice is that there's a good amount of anti-glare coating on the screen. You can see objects, but you won't be able to make out details. All right, so let's get set up here. This is an Android TV, not a Google TV. We'll get into that in a minute. We'll pick our language, our country, our time zone, our zip code. Then we need to pair the Bluetooth remote. That's cool. We won't have to worry about infrared issues. Uh, and then we can go into the Google account. And I really wish I could use my phone for this. This is something that you can do on a Google TV that is not offered here. So we'll have to hand punch everything in. We'll get into the Google account and then, wow. There's a lot of apps to choose from here or to uncheck. You might wanna just like skip all of these and then add your apps piecemeal if you want to, or just go down the line and unclick a bunch of apps like I'm doing here. And then we've got a ton of terms and conditions, a bunch for Google, and then later you have to do the same for Hisense. Now, Hisense is gonna put up this particular screen where it's gonna offer basically AI-affected sound and AI-affected picture as well as personalized ads. I don't want any of this, so I'm going to decline it, but you feel free to play around with it as you wish. And again, this comes into the terms and conditions. It's going to be gathering data around you. So 
Depending on how you feel about that, you may choose to decline all this stuff or just authorize it and throw caution to the wind. And here we go, familiar site, Android TV, and right away, just clicking around, it's very responsive. I like that, so at least navigating Android TV, there's not a lot of lag between when I click the button and when it actually moves on screen. So that's a great start. We'll see how apps load and such in just a moment. One thing that I do wanna point out is that this TV does have a microphone down at the bottom of the TV. There's a little switch. So if you don't want to have Google listening for the you know what, wake word, then turn that off and just use the button on the remote anytime you wanna call up the Google Assistant. All right, now we wanna start with our initial picture settings, and we'll just start with the splash screen for Android TV. Good as place as any, and then uh, we'll get into picture. We're in energy saving, we definitely don't want that. Right now, I have to decide whether we want theater day or theater night. Theater day, obviously, is going to be brighter. I know this TV is fairly bright for now. I'm gonna choose theater night. I think it might be a little bit easier on our camera. Uh, then we'll go down a little bit further. It says apply picture settings to all sources. We'll see if that actually applies to apps later or not. Let's go into advanced settings, have a look there. Color temperature is considered low, which I will take to mean warm as opposed to cool. Um, yeah, looks like low is warm and high is very cold. And then you have a few uh, options in between. Motion enhancement. You know where I'm going here, don't you? I'm turning it off for now. We'll play around with something like uh, custom or film a little bit later, but I can guarantee you I am not going to pick clear standard or smooth because I hate the look. I know some of you don't. That's okay. Everybody has their preference, but hey, this is my TV review and I'm turning that stuff off. Uh, filmmaker mode auto detection. This will automatically put the TV into filmmaker mode when it senses that you're watching 24 FPS content. I imagine it'll automatically apply it when we uh, turn on our Blu-ray player, start playing a movie. I don't want that actually. Filmmaker mode is generally darker than I prefer unless I'm watching in a super dark environment. So I'm gonna turn that off and uh, I'll choose filmmaker mode if I want to uh, when it's time. Color space, we'll leave that to auto. If we go into calibration settings, this is where we're going to make some adjustments to the white balance. Uh, for simplicity's sake, I usually do a two point white balance. I do not show that to you because every TV is different and you copying my settings is not gonna do you any good whatsoever. More on that in the full review. At any rate, I think that does it for the splash screen at least, and we'll check out what it looks like for the HDMI inputs in a moment, but let's check out where the apps are now. So we'll pop into Netflix, and I've already started an SDR title, good old Breaking Bad. We'll press pause so we don't get flagged, and then let's go into our picture settings from here. Oh, look at that, we're already in theater night, that's great. I seem to remember this from the U8G, if I'm not mistaken. It's already carried over those settings, so it really is universal. It's not just copying them over to the HDMI inputs, it's actually applying those inputs across the board, uh, at least for SDR, so that is great news. Um, let's check HDR. For Netflix, that's gonna end up being Dolby Vision, so let's find ourselves a Dolby Vision title. All right, so we've pulled up a Dolby Vision title. I've pressed pause again. We'll go into settings, and let's see what it picked for us this time. Dolby Vision IQ mode. Okay, so Dolby Vision IQ is basically going to use sensors in the TV to adjust the HDR tone mapping curve according to the brightness of the room, which I think is a very cool feature, but for the purposes of testing, uh, I'm actually gonna probably go with Dolby Vision Dark or Dolby Vision Custom. Uh, I'll play around with that. Dolby Vision Custom is clearly brighter than Dolby Vision Dark, and I'm betting that if we go into the advanced settings and look at motion enhancement, sure enough, it's off. Uh, just for grins, let's go into the Dolby Vision Custom and see if it's also disabled the, no, it hasn't. So with Dolby Vision Custom, which will be brighter, you'll have to turn off motion enhancement if that's what you want. Again, for the sake of the camera, I think I'm gonna go with Dolby Vision Dark, just for grins. Um, so that explains what it's gonna do with Dolby Vision content, and I'm assuming it's gonna be the same for uh, Disney Plus or HBO Max. Let's check out some HDR content on YouTube. Actually, I lied. We're gonna check out SDR first just to make sure that, sure enough, it picked Theater Night. So it is going across all apps. Hisense, that is super smart. I really appreciate that. All right, now we're gonna check out HDR on YouTube. I've pulled up something from our friends Jacob and Katie Schwartz on pause, of course. 
pull up the menu and we're in HDR energy saving mode, which we definitely don't want to do. So uh, it's not inferring much from my SDR settings. We need to go in here and uh, I'll pick HDR theater for now. I'd be interested to see how IMAX mode compares, but again, we'll be doing that a little bit later. Uh, go into advanced settings and motion enhancements on standard, so I'll turn that off. But that's really all I need to do for an, oh, filmmaker auto detection. We'll turn that off here as well. All right, at that point, I think that covers our apps and covers our HDMI ports. Let's just double check and make sure there's nothing I'm missing. All right, so we've pulled up our HDR demo disc. We'll pop into picture settings and sure enough, HDR theater is already selected. So it has gone across our apps and our HDMI inputs and we are now done. That is easier than most televisions. Okay, so first impressions time, best part, right? Well, they're almost entirely positive. I do wish this was a Google TV as opposed to Android TV. It'll never get updated to Google TV, so that's just how that is. But I will say that I think we won the panel lottery because what I've seen so far, it's extremely clean. We'll dig a little bit deeper into that as we evaluate this TV. Also, obviously a very bright TV. The backlight system looks like it's doing a great job as well. Off angle viewing is not good at all, but we're getting used to that with VA panels. That's just how that is. So overall, I think this TV is going to work out to be one of the best values out there. And I really can't wait to dig deep, put it through some torture tests and see just how well it holds up because it's clearly a great value. The question is just how great a value is it? Thanks as always for watching everyone. And for those of you who stuck around till the end, I've got some great news. Hisense Dual Cell is on its way. You know what I'm talking about? Are you excited for Dual Cell? Leave me a comment about that down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and here's two other videos I think you'll like.